And now we're going to look at the devastation in the Dust Bowl. Nature delivered another cruel blow. In 1931, rain stopped falling across much of the Great Plains region. This drought, or period of below average rainfall, lasted for several years and millions of people had fled the area by the time that it lifted. Agricultural practices in the 1930s left the area vulnerable to droughts. In fact, actually, the drought conditions were actually made worse, as it turns out, by the agricultural practices of the day. Uh, you know, Americans didn't really know this at the time, but what they had done is they'd taken land that for a long time, uh, there had been large protective grasses that really helped hold the topsoil in and kept everything in place. Uh, but, you know, many of them had plowed their fields and the rain didn't come, and without rain, they knew they couldn't grow anything, so people quit planting, so there was a lot of loose topsoil, um, and without any vegetation to hold that topsoil in place, the winds came, and it picked up that dirt and simply pushed it along. Um, and as it did that, these dust storms, these were huge dust storms. They always had high winds, but these winds picked up the dust and moved the dust with it. And as these, this rich topsoil was blown away, it began to uh, further erode more topsoil. And you know most of the good topsoil was simply lost. The dust sometimes flew as far as the Atlantic coast. These dust storms were huge in scale and also oftentimes created a static charge. Uh, plus there were other problems. Jackrabbits flourished without its natural predators because uh, jackrabbits could survive pretty well in the drought and the heat that, that hit the Great Plains during this region, uh, or during this, you know, hit, hit the Great Plains region during this time frame, I should say. Uh, so, you know, they flourished. There were problems with centipedes. There were problems with locusts. And, uh, you know, all of, all of this became really problematic. People couldn't, couldn't make a living off the land because they couldn't grow. Plus, they had to hide out from these dust storms. Uh, many people experienced poor health during this time, or people that already were in poor health uh, sometimes died because um, you know, they, they simply couldn't get away from the dust. The homes at the time weren't really built to, to um, provide, an adi provide adequate protection for these dust storms. You know, they, they did the best they could to try to seal up their homes, but dust still got in. Uh, you know, quite literally, people were eating dust, uh, you know, eating the soil from their property with their, with their meal because it ended up in their house, ended up on their table. They couldn't get the food to their mouth without, without dirt landing on it. Um, you know, they had to try to, you know, cover up their beds at night. It wasn't uncommon for them to get up in the morning and, and the only part of their, their pillow that wasn't covered in dust was the part where their head was laying. Um, you know, and the, and the health conditions with that were terrible. Uh, although they don't really have accurate records on exactly how many people died, they know many people became sick and, and were killed from inhalation of this dust. Uh, and of course many others simply fled the Great Plains region. Uh, these dust mounds, they choked off crops, they buried farm equipment, uh, they blew into windows, under doors, it went everywhere. And, and as this, you know, these storms came year after year after year, uh, you know, some people decided to tough it out, and some did, some made it through. But many left the area, and the hardest hit areas were uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, and New Mexico, and, uh, and Texas. And those areas all collectively became known as the Dust Bowl. Uh, and like I said, many people fled the Dust Bowl region and looked to find work elsewhere. Um, many of them came to reside uh, in particularly in California. Now, the droughts and dust storms left many in the dust bowl with no way to make a living. So some simply picked up and moved. These migrants, uh, you know, by the end of the 1930s, 2.5 million people had left the Great Plains states. Uh, many headed along Route 66 to California and settled into camps and sought work on farms. A lot of them settling in Southern California, and a lot of them came right up the Central Valley, and set, some settled right in this area. Um, the migrants were called Okies, which was somewhat of a derogatory term. Uh, the, they were called that after the state of Oklahoma, but migrants actually came from many states. Um, 
not all from Oklahoma, but that was still typically how they were referred to. Uh, and many migrants met hardship and discrimination as well. Uh, you know, many believed that coming to California would provide them with a good life, only to get here and discover that uh, things weren't as good as what they had been promised. Also during this time frame, uh, the plight of the migrants were captured um, really by many artists of the time period, and including you know, different writers uh, such as John Steinbeck and uh, singer-songwriter Woody Guthrie, who described the Dust Bowl and the disaster's effect on the people that it touched. Guthrie's lyrics spoke of the hardships that all Americans felt during the Great Depression. And uh, Steinbeck, you may be familiar with some of his work, such as The Grapes of Wrath, which actually just, just shortly after the Depression was turned into uh, a movie about a family, a migrant family coming out to California during the Dust Bowl. Um, Another one of his, his stories that involved migrant workers was Of Mice and Men, another very well-known story that once again uh, de depicts the main two characters um, who are, you know, they're migrant workers and they're on their way coming out west. And, uh, and so, you know, the, his stories really reflected what people were experiencing and, and told of the plight of, of the migrant worker. And for much of the decade, this depression defied most of the government efforts to defeat it, and Americans had to fend for themselves. This picture here is a picture of Florence Owens Thompson. She was born September 1st, 1903, and she passed away September 16th, 1983, and she was the subject of Dorothea Lange's photo, Migrant Mother. Uh, the picture was taken in 1936. Now, Dorothea Lange was a well-known photographer from the time period. Um, We'll be talking about her a little bit more in another chapter. She was one of the photographers who was commissioned with going around and documenting the plight of, uh, of those affected by the Depression. And so she took this picture of this, of this woman, and, and the picture became known as Migrant Mother. That's the title of the photograph. It's really probably the most iconic image of the Great Depression. Um, you know, this image is seen all over the place now. Um, like I said, probably the single most famous picture of the Depression. Uh, the woman pictured, once again, Florence Owens Thompson. She was the mother of seven children. She was 32 years of age when the photo was taken in Napomo, California. And she came to reside with her family in Modesto, California. Uh, and actually, um, when I was in elementary school, uh, my old elementary school is no longer open. I, uh, I went to John Sutter Elementary, which is currently located where Elliott Educational Center is, uh, the continuation high school in Modesto. Um, but that campus where Elliott is used to be an elementary school. I attended there, and when I was in either fifth or sixth grade, I can't really recall which, uh, it was one of the two. I had the same teacher for both. Um, one of my classmates brought this picture for show and tell. And it really blew away our teacher because our teacher instantly recognized the photograph and knew how famous it was. What he didn't know was that the woman was living in Modesto. And uh, you know, my friend that brought this picture uh, is the grandchild, or one of the grandchildren, uh, of this woman in the picture. Uh, that was back probably about 1980 or 1981 that he brought this picture for uh, show and tell. Like I said, she passed away in September of 1983. Um, so by then, um, I had entered into high school uh, along with uh, this woman's grandchild. Uh, last I knew, he still lives in the area and actually had a son that graduated from uh, Central Valley High School. So the family is still uh, very much in the local area. So there's a nice local tie-in. In fact, just a few years ago, the Modesto Bee did a whole series of articles uh, on the Great Depression and the effects that it had on people, especially locals. And on one day, the article focused uh, on, on Mrs. Thompson and um, once again spoke of the fact that she did reside in her later years in Modesto. So, like I said, a local tie-in to a very famous photo from the Depression.